As you are doubtless aware, the next big thing in handheld gaming is going to be the Nintendo 3DS, which is going to look all 3D to your eyeballs. Unless you're one of the millions of people who have problems with depth perception, and then of course you will not see the gimmick, and it'll all be a bit depressing. And speaking of a bit depressing, needless to say, the pop station manufacturers have jumped in to uh, provide their own 3D technology in an attempt to cash in on Nintendo's new baby. Actually, I don't think that's true, because these 3D devices I'm going to show you today I've had for months. Um, they've been donated by two separate people, in fact. Um, yeah, I think they've been around possibly longer than the announcement for the 3DS, in fact. Ooh, pop stations actually getting to the new technology before the real manufacturers. We're through the looking glass, people. Except, of course, needless to say, this technology doesn't work. Well, again, I suppose it does work. It's just not bloody 3D, is it? Let's have a look. From the bowels of hell it is. 3D colour game. Super Fighter. Hooray. Yes, indeed, it's that game where the people pull their own arms and legs off and chuck them at each other. We've seen it a thousand times in pop stations, and doubtless we're going to see it a thousand times more. Fortunately, we have some nice graphics on the box to... Uh, look at before I'm forced to play it. 3D colour game Super Vita, it says. There's even like a 3D effect over the text. Wow. Attention to detail. Right, then we've got this. Yeah. Um, you know when a daddy guile and a mummy blanker love each other very much and have a baby? That's what it comes out like. It has eyes that are um, uh, dark blue marbles and stainless steel hair and basically looks like it's been boiled. Quite frightening, quite frightening. But not actually as frightening as this tiny little plastic Ken in the corner. Sort of a cross between Street Fighter Ken and Ken from Barbie, I think. Terrifying. Apparently a company called Micro Gear is behind packaging this. Well done, lads. And on top of the game itself, 3D colour game Super Fighter, it says, in a sort of unpleasant spiky handheld design. And sure enough, there's the same game as ever, and with yeah, various titles as ever. Um, in the top left, this is apparently now called Immortal Fighter, despite being called Super Fighter up there, and pile of shit by everybody who's ever played it. Right, back. Oh, we've got some instructions. This is always good for a laugh. <clears throat> The game starts with two energy bars for your fighter and the computer. That makes sense. Also perfect English. Disappointing. Sunday punch and kick your... Less disappointing. <laughs> Sunday punch and kick. Hadn't picked up on that. I have no idea of what a Sunday punch and kick are. Are they uh, martial arts that you reserve for church? I have no idea. Anyway, apparently you need to Sunday punch and kick your opponents by pressing the button heavy blow or light blow. Hmm... Skip the uh, obvious innuendo of that. Interestingly, looking at the old screenshot there, the Zangief-type figure on the left appears to be throwing bananas. While well, he's doing the uh, ancient technique of pulling his own arms off. Very strange. Anyway, you have to win two out of three bouts to enter into the next level. The winner is the one who has more energy left after 60 minutes in each battle. 60 bloody minutes?! <laughs> That has got to be a typo. That has got to be 60 seconds. There's no way you could play this for 60 minutes. Just imagine that. Actually, don't. It's terrifying. Right, uh, just a quick look at the sad onion. 0 to 3. Sounds about standard rating. Eco Man from the Eco Man core, apparently. What? What's that got to do with um, micro gear from the fry? I don't know. I'm just so confused by it. Bloody hell, look at that. Copyright 2003? That can't be right. Surely this thing's eight years old? That's. Well, I suppose all the uh, other information on the box is false, so there's no reason to believe that either, to be honest. Right, let's crack it open and have our eyes assailed by the 3D effect. Of course, I'm shooting this with a 2D camcorder, so you won't see the 3D effect at home. But, as I'm sure you're already aware, the effect's not going to be 3D, is it? If it is, I will eat several hats. Right, there's some sort of uh, plastic thing it's choking on. Let's pull that out. I've already stuck batteries in. Something that is quite nice with the translucent design, as you can see just how little there is in the way of innards. There's sort of a little PCB there, a little one there, and a speaker there, and the batteries. And that's pretty much your lot. All right, it clips down. Looks a bit like a Fisher Price Batarang, doesn't it? <laughs> fatter Batarang, Fatter Batarang. Uh, oh, hang on, I'm going to have to explain that. Quickly, annotation link. Ding. There it is. Right. Ready to turn it on. Oh, 
it's so exciting playing the same game I've played 50 times and I always hate. On! Oh, that's less good. Ah. No idea where that music's stolen from. Oh, yeah, that looks dreadful. Why is that? Hang on, the mirror isn't shiny. I would say there's, there's some sort of protective shield over it, but I can't imagine that from the prompt. Well, there is. There is a protective film. Ah, hang on. Of course, it's awkward to get off. There we are. Ah, right, I think this will probably work better now, although better is extremely relative. So the way this is working is the screen is built into the top here, and it's reflected down onto a mirror. And apparently, that's 3D. Yes. Or, more relevantly, no. You can't make a 2D screen 3D just by reflecting it through a bloody mirror, lads. Your name is a lie. We believe in nothing now. Right, go on then, let's have a quick look at it. Oh yeah, that's more like it. Immortal fighter it is. Looks slightly posher than the old uh, Pop Station variants. Go on, start. Oh, I get to select which one I am. Red or blue? The eternal struggle. I'm going to be red, because he has a beard. Oh, I love that bit of wave their arms at each other. You are, of course, getting the full 3D <coughs> effect at home, because there aren't any. I do need to restress that. I'm bored already. Can't really tell what's going on. You mash buttons, people leap around, their arms and legs fly off. Some energy is lost. Nobody cares. Off. Close. Throw. Scorn. Right, we'd better take a look at the others, because, oh yeah, I've got four of the swines. Um, the packaging for all the others is tragically generic. No interesting uh, boiled blankers on the fronts of these. For instance, this one here with the... Uh, I was going to say with the soccer game, but actually, looking at the screenshot, that's not the usual Pop Station soccer game. This is some sort of uh, penalty shootout thing. Looks like you control a goalie. In fact, to be specific, it looks like you've got a football goalie who is using his telekinetic powers to hover a bicycle wheel above his head, while some red goblins leap and gyrate around in the background. That's probably about as much sense as the game will make, actually. But yeah, it's just all generic now. Look, 3D colour game, pictures of racing cars and things that might appear. Apparently these cost $4.99 from a... Uh, oh, can't tell the name of the shop. Never mind, we'll skip that then. Something that is interesting, the nice 3D effect on the box, it now doesn't match up with the text at all. Lack of attention to detail. Go on, what other games have we got? Oh no, the rubbish Formula One game. Uh, that's this, basically, isn't it? Ooh, it's two uh, wagon wheels on that one. What's going on there? Oh my goodness, that's one of the very worst Pop Station games, Basketball. Um, I've got that on... What was that? That was the Pro Pop. The um, thing that looked like an iPod but just played Pop Station games. It's so difficult to work out, it's untrue. But somebody did. Um, bizarre quasi-celebrity anecdote here. Um, the comedian Ben Miller. Do you remember I did that thing uh, called The Node with uh, Armstrong and Miller? The comedians, well, I took along some pop station props, and one of them was the pro-pop. And Ben Miller sat down and was absolutely determined to work out how to play the basketball game, which is a pretty much inhuman feat in itself. And not only did he work it out, but he then had so much patience, beyond infinite patience, in fact, that he um, then worked out how to score a goal, and scored a goal. I mean, if you've ever played the basketball game, amazing. If there's ever a war, I'm being on that man's side, as he is clearly a formidable type. Right, uh, what else have we got? Oh, that thing with the submarines and the aeroplanes and the autofocus. Ah, oh, fantastic. Really frightening bit of clip art there. That looks like a squashed Clive Owen with a bad wig. Um, a bit of submarine action over there. And literally nothing of interest on the back. Yeah, it's the Ecoman Company, copyright 2003 again, apparently. Not three set onions. No mention of, uh, what was the company name from the other one? Micro Gear, that was it. Nothing to do with them then. Right, well, I'm um, going to have to fiddle about with batteries and screen protectors and goodness knows what. Get ready for a jump cut. Bing! And as if by magic, some pop stations appeared. Um, something really weird has happened while I'm putting in the batteries. Right? They all take two double A's. Except this one, which inexplicably only takes one double A. Why? 
that's just weird. Somehow this, I don't know, draws less juice. It's the soccer game. Why would that only need one battery while the others need two? Strange. Anyway, let's sort this out. Time for another jump cut. Bing! Right, everything's got batteries in, is ready to go. In fact, from a distance, this looks like a collection of bizarrely coloured Dreamcast controllers. But it isn't. It's horrible pop stations pretending to be 3D. Right, let's have a look at 3D colour game Submarine Attack. Oh, I've seen this game before. There's a submarine. It's being attacked. Don't expect any surprises. Right, on. Very nice. Less nice is that I can't see the screen at all. It's really, really um, dim, this one. Uh, oh, there we are. I think there's sort of a submarine in the bottom left. Yeah. Oh, let's just start. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Find my little red lines at the evil... What are they? Some sort of aircraft above. Oh, they've blown me up. Truly, this is one of the greatest tragedies of my life. Oh no, I've turned it off. Next, let's look at the orange one, which is Rally Thunder. If you can ever see it. There we are, Rally Thunder. A rally game, presumably. I'll bet it's just the Formula One. In fact, I would put money on it. Start on. Ooh, something's happening. No, it isn't. What's happening here? Come on, let me go. Well, this one's just broken. <laughs> we may never find the secret behind Rally Thunder. How odd. Come on, on, turn on. On you go. On, on, on. I'll be back in a second. I've fixed it! I had to hold down the um, reset button, but it seems to be working now. And you are not going to believe the tune it plays when you turn it on. Ready? Yes, Axel F with a note missing. Harold Faltermeyer will probably drop dead and then spin in his grave. Right, um, let's have a look. Wow, thanks for playing a farty noise in my face, I love that. Let's turn it off. No, let's turn the sound off when we talk about this. Yeah, it's just that Formula One game all over again. Something I will say for these 3D colour games is that the graphics do seem to be a bit better defined than the old original pop station things. Based on the same technology, just with a mirror, of course, but they do seem to have at least gone back and made them look slightly prettier. For instance, this could arguably be said as properly being in colour, which is a bit of a first. Go on, then. Let's quickly start... Start. No. Stop making the noises. Here we go. Oh yeah. Go. Why is it just flashing go and I can't go? Oh here we go. Right. What, which one am I? Oh, I'm the only one there, right? Good God, flying all over the track like it's made of butter. Under, oh, high gear. Go. Yeah. Woo woo. Yeah. Look at him. He's completely drunk. Drunk driver simulator. Who gave him a Formula One car? In fact, he's so drunk he thinks his Formula 1 car is a rally car, judging by the uh, name of the game. Oh, I'm giving off sparks. I think I've lost. Sounds like an excuse to stop playing to me. Right, we only have one left. The purple one. That bizarrely only takes one battery, which has fallen out. Where's the back? Deary me. Even for pop stations, that's very poor. There's supposed to be a screw in the back that holds the batteries in, you see, but these screws don't fit and just drop out, needless to say. Right, 3D colour game, soccer. I can barely contain my excitement. I tell you what, I'm actually going to push the reset button before we begin, just in case. I don't know why this one inexplicably only has one battery. I think we're about to uh, find out, however. Ooh, look at that. Spooky goings-on with some sort of weird football-related goalkeeper-y nonsense. Sound. There isn't any. Ah! That's what the other battery does. It's sound. Yep, they've decided that all football players are deaf, so you're just going to have to uh, make up your own sound effects. I suggest boop, bing, and especially the last one. Right, go on then. This looks especially like a pathetic game I had when I was about six years old. 
Oh no, now we've got sand! So why are they only the one back? Oh, I'm so confused. All right, buttons don't seem to do anything. I don't actually recall seeing this in a pop station before, but yeah, you just catch the billions of soccer balls that they fire at you, which is, of course, absolutely nothing like the way that football works. If you are actually going to a football match and just see hundreds of weird red gnomes firing an unending display of balls at a uh, person, then you've probably gone to the wrong place. If this is the game that I used to play, a little uh, trophy sometimes appears on the left-hand side and you have to run over and get it by tapping left twice. Yeah. I was going to say, a giant hand came out when you went to grab it in the previous version I had, but uh, never mind, that was years ago. It's nice to see... Oh no, wait! Yay, there we are! I was going to say, I couldn't believe game design has actually regressed since I was six years old, 28 years ago. Oh, I think I left one in, did I? I'll tell you what, don't bloody care either way. Oh, so there you go. Why bother developing incredibly expensive and clever 3D technology when you can just reflect a 2D screen through a mirror and pretend? That is the question the pop station makers ask, and the answer is because it's a load of old rubbish. I'll tell you what, though, one interesting thing to come out of this is that this gives us a completely level playing field for people with bad depth perception, you see? They may not be able to see the 3D effect of the 3DS, they may not be able to see the 3D effect at the cinema, but they can see the pathetic rip-off 2D effect of this just like anybody. It's the great leveller. Oh, must just mention, I've got a new thing going on with the BBC which you need to watch with your eyeballs. It's called Backspace, and it's like a vaguely topical um, technology comedy thingamajiggy wudgy madoodle. We're doing one a week for six weeks. Um, the first two episodes are up already, and the new ones are going up on each Friday. Actually, let me apply some annotations. Episode one, episode two, and I shall list some others down here as and when, assuming people are still watching this video during the run, of course. Anyway, backspace. Go and watch it and leave a comment saying how excellent I am. Off you go. Backspace. <laughs> I just like really saying the title. Backspace. It's an excellent title, actually, because of course not only is it one of the most commonly used computing terms, but could also be vaguely interpreted as meaning bumhole. See? Very, very good. I like a good name, and I can't come up with them myself. I mean, I've got a regular feature called Terrible Old Games You've Probably Never Heard Of. So that gives you some idea of how good I am with names. When it actually comes to making up names for anything posh like this, other people do it. And I just nod my head afterwards and go, hmm, yeah, that's good, yeah. And that's the creative process for names. <laughs> well, that's a bizarre tangent I've gone off on there. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, look, and I've just realised all the uh, writing on these screens matches the colour of the game. Except for the blue one, which is inexplicably red. Oh, look at that. Man, this has got the most irrelevant bits at the end of a video ever. Lego Snowman.